Well, good morning, beautiful. Welcome to a brand new day of life. Happy Monday, everybody. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new week. And in my world, this happens to be retreat week. So you're going to have me pepped up every morning this week. I mean, that's the way you're going to get me. I'm going to be pepped up and fired up because, yeah, retreat is just a couple days away. And I'm going to be sharing lots of awesome things throughout this week to get you ready for retreat. Even if you're not going to be there, I want you to be ready because some awesome things are going to be happening. This morning I want to talk to the girls who have been set up for comeback. Who wants a comeback? We all love the story of comeback, but let's face it, no one likes the setback and failure first. But don't you see that all your failures, all your shortcomings, all your disappointments have the potential for a comeback? God is in the business of redeeming and restoring. Look at Peter. Most of us know the disciple Peter for one thing, denying Jesus. You remember the story. Jesus is preparing the disciples for his own crucifixion, which is ahead. And Peter says, Jesus I will go with you even to death. And Jesus says, Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny you even know me three times. And Peter failed Jesus, not once, not twice, but indeed three times. Three times he denied Jesus. And when he heard that rooster crow, he remembered what Jesus had said. Can you imagine his shame Can you imagine the reality of his failure? But here's the thing for us to remember and apply today. Jesus knew Peter would fail, and he chose him anyway. This was no surprise to Jesus. And God knew you would screw up too. He knew every misstep that you would take, and he's still choosing you. God has chosen you, and he wants to work with you through your failures and use them as a setup for your comeback. Now, in order for a comeback, we must learn our limits. For some reason, we imagine reaching a level of life where we won't have to work on ourselves anymore, a level where we finally have it all together. Isn't that our goal, to reach this level Well, you let me know when you reach that level, okay? Because I'm pretty sure for as long as we have breath, we're going to be working on ourselves. We have limits to our strengths. And if we are only relying on ourselves, we are never going to reach our full potential. God wants to partner with you with his limitless power and your God-given potential. You can do the impossible. But you can't do it on your own. You're going to kill yourself trying to overcome your past and your future failures on your own. God wants to restore you. He wants to help you. Won't you surrender to him and recognize you need him? You will always be a work in progress this side of heaven. So go ahead and make friends with the process. And now, this is important, shed the shame. Failures and shortcomings come with a natural guilt and shame. But your failure is not the end of your story. Peter's failure wasn't the end of his story. He had this epic public fail that we're still reading about today. And gosh, aren't you glad to know that your failure probably won't even be remembered five years from now? If Peter can overcome his failure... I'm pretty sure you can too. Shame and guilt are a tool of the enemy to hold you back. Shed the shame. Scripture says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. That means I don't have to walk around condemned. I don't have to keep digging up my past and beating myself up with it. God's design is for you to be restored and use every ounce of hurt, every lesson in the failure for good. In your future. If Peter would have been stuck in shame, 
<coughs> excuse me, he would have avoided Jesus. But we read in John chapter 1 that after Jesus had been crucified and put in the grave, the disciples were on the water fishing. And Jesus walks up and says, hey boys, you catching anything? And when they realized it was Jesus, Peter was the one and the only one to get out of the boat and head Jesus. He didn't avoid Jesus. He swam to him. <coughs> Don't let anything in your past keep you from the future Jesus has for you. Peter, the epic failure, became one of the greatest crusaders for Christ. A former failure, restored, redeemed, refocused. A fail doesn't make you a failure. God knew all the times that you would start and give up, and yet he's still betting on you. He knows you. He believes in you. He wants to restore you. He wants to redeem you, and he wants to help you refocus. You have a chance to start again. You were born for this. Let's get going. Now, I would be honored to pray with you, and forgive me for my ugly cough this morning. We're going to pray together and get this day going. God, good morning. God, how we thank you for this new day of life. Thank you for your goodness, for your blessings. Thank you for choosing us for life today. And thank you that you restore us and you redeem us and you refocus us. Thank you for choosing us and believing in us even when you knew we would fail, even when you knew how many times we would start all gung-ho and give up somewhere along the way. God, I pray that you would use every failure, every shortcoming, every setback for a set-up for our comeback. Thank you for using all these things for good. I pray for the one listening this morning that's discouraged, the one believing the enemy's lies that they're just not good enough. And I pray that they would buy into your truth, that with you, they're more than good enough. And I pray that you would begin restoring, lifting up those heads that are hanging low right now, God. I pray for each and every family. I ask that you would meet them right where they're at, that you would provide for them, you would protect them, God. We lift up our children to you today, and we ask that you would just be with them at school, guide them, help them with their choices and their decisions. Please bless every marriage, every husband represented here. Strengthen, restore. Thank you again for this day of life. We're so excited to live it. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, my comeback girls, have a great Monday. I love you wildly. Bye-bye.